technology, TV, mass media, internet. How bad can it be, you know? Just sit down, watch a couple hours of TV. No big deal. No harm done. It's not true, according to George Gerbner, the founder, creator of the cultivation theory that states um, TV could, technology could impact your entire world view. So what I'm going to do today is talk about the cultivation theory, and I'm going to talk, give a brief overview of what it is, and then I'm going to go into a little bit of depth on a couple of the main points, the scary world syndrome and how it is still in effect today, and mainstreaming and how that is still a big deal today. So to start, let's just go over a basic overview of cultivation theory. George Germer, as I said, founded this theory, introduced the theory in 1976. He wrote an article titled, Living with Television, The Violence Profile. Uh, the main point of the cultivation theory is that television had become the main storyteller in that culture. The argument for the internet and movies, video games, mass media, all that can now be thrown in there today. Um, he states violence is television's main principle message. Over half of primetime TV contains violence, he said, or the threat of violence. Gerbner and his associates monitored violence in television for over 20 years. Uh, they found about two-thirds of major characters in television use violence. Heroes just as much as the villains. They, Elderly, children, minorities, women, and blue-collar workers were the most victimized in that and they found that met marginalized people, lower class, you know, your working class people, were usually underrepresented, which means they were shown to be more violent than reality, or they were over victimized. And so your your um your marginalized people probably lived in more fear of violence if they watched a lot of television. Um, profiles of viewers, he, he had three. He had the light viewers, which watched less than two hours of television a day. The mid viewer, who watched two to four, between two and four tele hours of television a day. And the heavy viewers, who watched four or more hours of television a day. Uh, light viewers tend to be less affected by the violence in, the, in what they watch. Which leads me into my next point, the scary slash meme world syndrome. Uh, which can't be defined as seeing the world as a scarier, uh, more unforgivable, more dangerous place than it really is. And where this goes back, Erbner um, came up with this theory syndrome by by using the heavy television viewers as an example. And he says that heavy television viewers tend to suffer from this because they see more violence on television. And they... They view the world and that starts to become the reality of the world. Their view of the world is more violent, like the violence they see on television. And he even states that the heavy viewers don't have a choice, that they become by this syndrome naturally because they watch all this television. An example in a University of Kentucky communication workbook is nursing home residents. Um, they Nursing home residents tend to watch more television because they're in a room or in a nursing home all day, and that's all they are. They don't go out much. They don't go and see the world. And so they become to get this, this altered worldview, this different worldview that the world is more dangerous than it really is because they, so they see all the violence on television and they don't go to the real world. And then also a more modern, a more... Uh, today example is violence in video games. A study done in 2004 showed that titled The Effects on Violent Video Games and Habits on Adolescents showed that adolescents, sorry, showed that teens who played violent video games for extended periods of time tend to see the world as a more violent place and they tend to be more aggressive, which shows that 
not only are elderly people affected by this, younger teenagers are too, and it affects their worldview at a younger age. Uh, the mean world syndrome is affecting, like I said, many people because of the extended hours playing video games, because of extended hours watching TV, and that could potentially be a problem. And now on the mainstreaming. Um, Germner described mainstreaming as heavy viewers develop a commonality outlook of by viewing the same images and the same, you know, the same stuff on TV. Um, you know, an example he gives is people start to start to um, view the world the same uh, with the same distrust and with the same danger view that that they catch by watching a lot of TV. And then maybe not be reality. In today's world, a big mainstream, big example of mainstreaming is through the social media. And, you know, lots of people spend lots of time on their social media sites, Twitter, Facebook, you know, etc. And it's become a place where we put ideas, thoughts, beliefs, sometimes what we're doing or what we're eating or, you know, whatever. And just share stuff with others, with friends, with, you know, with our followers on Twitter um, and the biggest example that I can think of and especially recently has been the Coney 2012 outbreak it was huge on social networks invisible children designed it that way they, they released it on the internet to take advantage of mainstreaming on social networks um, all of a sudden they wanted to make Coney known. Coney who was been accused of many many crimes. Uh, all of a sudden everyone on social networking was talking about Coney. You couldn't go on Facebook without seeing tons of posts about Coney. It, it was a soon mainstream thought that Coney must be stopped. You know this is a perfect example of mainstream. People seeing the same thing and now thinking the same thing. And exactly what what um what Gerben, what Gerbner, sorry, had was showing you with the use of television. And so that's a brief summary of the cultivation theory and, it, and two of its big ideas, the um, scary world syndrome and mainstreaming and examples from today. And I want to leave you with three discussion questions. First, Gerbner's big idea was that television had become culture's biggest storyteller. Do you believe that it is still the case today, or has something, another media outlet, surpassed it as a, as a storyteller, such as social media or a movies, internet, you know, etc.? And explain your answer. Uh, do you think the world perception of people can be shaped this dramatically by the media, or is it more based on personal experiences? And the last one, do you agree that with Gerbner that violence in television is television's main idea or main principle? Or do you think it might be something else and why? Thank you.